Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are in a new unit now, and with a new unit comes new material. We're going to start off on page three, and this is sort of the foundation of everything that we're going to be talking about. This, you got to know. you got to understand it, and I hope that this won't be too hard. We're going to be talking about the mole, spelt exactly the same as the animal, although I believe it has no relation, although there are an awful lot of internet jokes that would tell you otherwise. So the mole is a very important idea in chemistry. Up until now, when we've been talking about chemistry, we talk about things in terms of individual atoms, right? Like I will show you and say, this is the chemical formula for water. And if I were to draw it, it would look something like this. Right? And I, I show you this in the sense that there is one oxygen and two hydrogen, and this balances in some way to make something. And maybe if I want to be very fancy, I might show it as a balanced chemical equation, like so. But in this context, we're dealing with like two molecules of water, two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. We're dealing with incredibly small amounts of things, which is good for the purposes of understanding things, but it's not helpful for the purposes of reality. Because, fun fact, you have way more than two molecules of water in you. You have literally trillions upon trillions. There is probably more water in you than there is sand on the beaches in terms of particles. So while this is useful for us to understand things, it's not useful for us to describe anything that physically exists. This is a problem because chemists are in the business of describing things that physically exist. They're in the business of studying matter. They want to understand stuff. So we needed a system in order to do that. And Generally speaking, we want to always come up with a system that is something we already know how to do, but we just like tweak it a bit. So the mole was invented, and really roughly, really roughly, the mole basically serves the same purpose in chemistry as, say, a dozen serves in baking or English. A dozen. You guys know what a dozen is, of course, right? Like if I put the word dozen here and I ask you to go get me three dozen of something, you hopefully know that I'm not asking you to get some weird, I don't know, sleepy kind of thing, doze in. That's not what I'm asking for. I'm asking for you to get some multiple of 12. Similar, if I tell you we need a pair Go get me six pairs of gloves. Well, you probably know that a pair is two. You also probably know stuff like, say, a trio is going to be three. You probably don't know, let's see if I remember how to spell the word, a fortnight. Don't know why that would come up in any everyday conversation. It's a very archaic term. It's very old. No one would use it nowadays because it's so old-fashioned. But this is a way to say two weeks or 14 days. Who knew? One of the most popular games on Earth right now is called Two Weeks. On top of that, Fortnite, we've got a couple others. There's also something called a score, which is another way to say 40. Wait, that one might be 20. Uh, I don't remember. I'll have to check. Anyway, these are words that mean numbers. A mole is also a word that means a number. It just means a very, 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 very big number. Like... Difficult to picture big because the number is
that many zeros. Yeah, it's a lot, I know. Why that number? Uh, that's a little harder to answer, but that's the number that chemists chose. And it's a very important number because we use it a lot in chemistry. So as I was just mentioning, we have a hard time dealing with individual atoms, individual molecules, right? If I ask you to go down to the storeroom and get me two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen so I can do an experiment to make some water, you can't. We don't have tools small enough to grab individual molecules. So what you're going to do is the equivalent of going to, say, a bulk barn or the grocery store aisle and just taking a big scoop and shoveling up a whole bunch of molecules and just dumping them into a bag for me, and then you'll bring me the bag. How many do you get in your scoop? It's related to the mole. Roughly speaking, that's what the mole is. It is a number. And that is all. It is, works in the same way as dozens, pairs, trios, fortnights, scores, and all the rest. Pretty sure score is 20 now. I think so, because two score would be 40 then. Pretty sure it's 20. I'm probably going to look it up directly after the video and be like, oh no, I got it wrong. It's almost as bad as that dodecahedron. All right. Let's take a look at the notes here. There's some important things to say here, plus it'll remind me of a few other things I should mention. But the key thing to understand is that a mole is that, just like how a dozen is this. So formulas and molecular mass deal with individual atoms and molecules. Chemists do not work with those amounts because we can't. We literally cannot do that. So we needed a way in which to put all of this together. As a result, Here's the thing, right? If I ask you to go down, much like with my bulk barn analogy, and I ask you to go down and get me a bunch of hydrogen, you're going to show up, you get the big scoop out, you scoop it up, and you pour it in the bag. How do they choose how much to charge you? They take the bag of stuff, whatever it is, and they put it on a scale, and they see how much it weighs. And then they, of course, charge you based on the weight, the, the mass. We do the same thing in chemistry. We have scales. We mass things. We weigh them, and we figure out what their mass is, and then we use that information to do chemical reactions. So we needed a way to relate the amount of stuff to its mass, and this came up. So the guy who came up with this idea was, um, he had a long name, Lorenzo Romano Amadeo Carlo Avogadro. You can tell by the preponderance of O's, aka there's a lot of them, that he was from the Mediterranean uh, cultures. Either he's Spanish or he's Italian. I'm pretty sure he's Italian because Romano is a city in Italy, and for a long time people's names were based on where they were from. Anyway, he managed to come up with a way in which to measure a very small quantity of matter. He suggested that if you took exactly 12 grams of carbon-12, remember carbon-12, we learned in isotopes, means that it is carbon with a total mass of 12. So 12 grams of carbon-12, you would have a very large number of carbon atoms. And just like dozen and couple and pair and all these things mean something, he decided to give that one a special name too, and he called it a mole. So he literally went... Excuse me, dear sir, I would like to purchase 12 grams of carbon-12. And he did. And he said, this I shall make one mole. And there it is. So inside of this jar is currently one mole of atoms of carbon. In theory, carbon-12. In practice, there's a few other isotopes in there. So this is exactly one mole of carbon-12. So in here, right now, is that many atoms of carbon-12. Doesn't seem like a lot, does it? Right? Like, the jar's not even half full. And yet, that number is incredibly big. But you have to remember, particles are incredibly small. They are literally impossibly small. You're made of them. Everything is made of them. So if they were big, it would be hard to fit everything everywhere. 
So in here, in this tiny jar, is a lot of stuff. One mole of stuff. Now, I think you can tell that writing all of that out every time is a pain, so scientists don't do that. Instead, they write it in what is called scientific notation, named after the people who use it the most. Scientific notation is a way to write really big numbers, or really small numbers, in a much shorter way. That way it's much easier to put it on your piece of paper or talk about it, because nobody wants to pull out an extra chalkboard just to write out a number. Scientific notation, you've probably seen before, but the way it generally works is that you take the very first digit, whole number digit, so in this case 6, and then you put a decimal right after it. Now in this case we've also got 02, so we're going to keep those two as well and go like so. Now at this point we're going to put it as times 10 and it's going to go to the power of something. The something depends on how many jumps I would need to move the decimal from here at the end of the board all the way back to here where I'm putting it in my scientific notation. In this particular case it turns out to be 23 times. There are 23 decimal movements in order to write that giant number up there. So this is called Avogadro's number because we named it after the guy. You know you've done a good job in science when we name something after you. Avogadro's number, Planck's constant, the Newton of force, the ohm of resistance, the watt of power, I think it's power, oh well, lots of people. The Volt, that's another one that's named after a guy. His name was Volta. Anyway, so Avogadro's number is usually abbreviated or given the symbol of N. Sometimes we'll put a little A underneath to say that it's Avogadro's number so we don't get it confused with some other N, but N is usually what we use. And it is really critical for everything we do in chemistry. Really critical. Now, you'll notice here I have a whole bunch of different jars, and all of these have different materials in them. And you'll notice, of course, that I have different amounts of material in every one. So what's going on? Right? Like I said, this was one mole of carbon, and it's 12 grams of carbon. Actually, it says here it's 12.01 grams of carbon. Where did we see 12.01 in relation to carbon before? When did that come up? Oh, yeah. It's on here, isn't it? 12.01, the atomic mass of carbon. What are the chances that one mole of carbon would happen to have exactly the same mass as one atom of carbon on the atomic scale, right? One atom of carbon weighs 12.01 atomic mass units. One mole of carbon weighs exactly 12.01 grams. I wonder what the chances of that are. Or is it possible that maybe we did that on purpose? Look, here is an incredibly dangerous substance, dihydrogen monoxide. Hopefully you guys remember your covalent naming enough to know that that is water. I wonder how much it weighs. This is one mole. These are mole jars. They have exactly one mole. See, it says right here, one mole of water. I'm covering up, though, how much it weighs. What's its mass? What is the mass, I wonder? Carbon-12 has a mass of 12. Water What's the atomic mass of water? One atom of water. How much does it mass out? The shortest video ever that I did just yesterday. We said that water has a mass of 18.02. And this is 18.02. Every single jar here has some quantity of material. 
and that quantity of material corresponds to the mass on the periodic table. Here's copper. One mole of copper. There it is. It's nice and shiny, copper colored. What's its mass? Well, based on the pattern we've seen so far, we could check the periodic table. We pull out our periodic table. We look up copper. It's located right under, right above silver. It's number 29. And it says that it is 63.55. So what's the chances that this is 63.55? Crazy, huh? Again, this wasn't by chance. This was done on purpose. Avogadro was a smart guy, and he realized that there were definitely relationships, right? Obviously, one mole of something is just a lot of it, right? This is just a giant mountain of carbon. But he chose the mole to make sure that it lines up perfectly with the mass of those individual particles. Now, the exact method they did that is uh, a little complicated, especially since they did it during the 1800s, like before electricity, let alone computers. But because of their cleverness, we have a unit of measurement that perfectly mirrors on the subatomic level, on the particle level, I should say, and on the macro level, the level we can see. Now, it's not absolutely perfect. I'm not going to claim that this jar full of stuff with its 12.001 gram weight, that this is the literal same number as one atom of carbon. That's impossible. There's multiple atoms in here. But one of them would say grams, and the other one says atomic mass units. And they do the same thing. So, super simple. All of this is basically talked about on page 5. calcium. It's a lot. Why is it so much? Calcium is a little bit heavier than the others. So you got to fill it up. The heavier the element, the more you need. Of course, you look at this and go, wait a second, but calcium and copper, calcium has more in it than copper does, and yet copper is heavier. What's going on? comes down to density, something you may remember from grade 7. There's more particles in a smaller space for copper because copper is very dense. Calcium has fewer particles in the same space, which means I need to be, take up more room in order to have the same amount of stuff. Of course, this also means that, for example, if your uh, bones were made of copper instead of calcium, you would be shorter. All right, maybe not, actually. I just made that up. But you know, it might be cool. Copper man, I guess? I don't know. Everyone could be Wolverine. Anyway. Page five, let's take a look. Avogadro related the number of particles to its mass. By definition, one mole of carbon has a mass of 12.001 grams. If the mass of one mole of any atom is the atomic mass in grams, then one mole in grams will be equal to its atomic mass. So aluminum is 27, as it says here. Silver is 107, and sodium is 23. And Whenever you're trying to do anything, such as water, as we just saw when I pulled good old water right there out to show you, you just add all the pieces. So the masses on the periodic table are also the masses of moles of the quantity of the substance, you know, a giant mountain of it. And that's kind of it. That's sort of the key thing what's going on here. The idea was we can't really work with one particle of water, but we can work with a handful of water, a mole of water. The mole turned out to be this incredibly huge number because Avogadro, being the smart guy that he is, pegged the mole by measuring something physically and then defining it from there. So, yeah, he could have made the number to be very organized. He could have said that it's like 10. But then if he did that, it wouldn't line up so perfectly when it comes to actually using it. So this is an example of a unit of measurement, a system of measurement, that is perfectly aligned with what we needed to do. So what does this mean for all practical purposes? Well, it means that, hypothetically speaking, I'm going to do something a little crazy here. If I ask you for one mole of water, 
how much mass will that be? Well, we just said one mole of water is 18.01 grams. So this will be 18.02 oops, grams of water. There's our conversion thing coming in again. There's 18.02 grams per mole. Another way to write that, if I weren't to put it in the conversion matrix, let's do it in another color here, we'll do it in red. 18.02 grams per mole, right? For one mole, that many grams. Okay, but now let's make it difficult. What happens if I said there are two moles of water? Okay, yeah, that doesn't actually sound that difficult, right? Because I would just go... Eighteen times two, what am I going to get? Well, um, one times two, two. Uh, eight times two is going to be sixteen. Carry the one. So thirty-six point oh four grams of water. It's a way for us to relate things, and as we're going to see when we go further in this it allows us to continue using all of our chemical balanced chemical equations to still do chemistry even though we're no longer working with individual particles but instead we're working with giant mountains of particles but that's for later i've already started to hint at the next thing conversions are coming up so the thing to remember is that a mole is just a word to mean a certain number just like how a dozen means 12. a mole means this giant number and that's it that's all that it matters for our purposes though the key is is that moles correspond to the exact mass of that element as written on the periodic table and here's some crazy ones whoa lead this is 207 grams 0.2 right and again it doesn't look like it takes up a lot of space because lead is again very dense most of the metals are so this is very heavy this is actually pretty weighty in my hands. We've also got some pretty cool looking ones over here. These are colored because they're compounds. This is potassium chromate. This is actually a quarter of a mole because presumably getting a full mole in here wouldn't work because if you notice we're about a third full so in order to get a full mole I would need to have a bigger container. So this is only a quarter of a mole so again whoa man it's very it's very light right it's very it's not very dense there's not a lot in here but look at that bright and vibrant color all the dyes in your clothing made with chemistry there's a yellow here's a blue this is copper sulfate with water in it this is copper sulfate without water in it gee I wonder which one has water this one's slightly heavier how much heavier, I wonder? Hmm, how heavy is water? The water makes this one slightly heavier. Oh, wait, did I say this one was heavier? Oh, silly me. The water makes this one slightly heavier, this one's slightly lighter. How much lighter? Depends on how much water I put in here. And the crazy part, copper sulfate, if you leave it exposed to water, to air, right, so that if I unscrewed the top and I left it, it would slowly absorb the water out of the air and it would turn blue crazy right this one we call anhydrous by the way an meaning not and hydrous meaning wet so this is not wet and this is hydrated it's wet anyway that's it these are moles of substances you guys now hopefully have a grasp on what a mole is you guys can take a look on page six there's a bit of practice around finding out the molar mass of different uh, molecules and you just simply work through and figure how to do it. If you want to take a look at page seven, it basically is this, conversions. But I'll talk about that in the next video in more detail. See you guys next time.